Hey, welcome back. In the previous video I did on ecology, I was looking at the fundamentals in introducing ecology as a subject. Today I'll be looking more into the different hierarchy organisations the ecology rounds into. Now I covered this at the end of the previous video. If you didn't see that video, I'd recommend you watching it. But now I'm going to be looking at each different level from biosphere all the way down to individual and what is looked at in those single points. So to start with I'm going to go back to the biosphere. Now biosphere will be something big. It encompasses the global processes so you'll be looking at Earth as a singular biosphere. Now the different things you'll be looking over would be migration patterns, whether that being in whales or whether it being fish who travel through different ecosystems. For example, in a lake, into a river and into the ocean, or perhaps just river, ocean or river, lake, as each of them have a different conditions which make them different ecosystems. Also looking in biosphere is the exchange of energy between different different ecosystems. So you'll be looking at how energy changes from forests into urban areas or perhaps slightly differently. Perhaps you'll be looking at the opposite direction and see how energy produced in cities has um, travelled across into um, flower fields or mountainous areas or forests or similar different ecosystems that are slightly different. Now Cities aren't natural ecosystems, but due to their size and their unique conditions, they could essentially be considered a different ecosystem, but of course primarily relating to us humans as opposed to animals. Now, you also look at the migration of birds, because of course birds often move south for winter if it's warmer in areas towards the equator than it is towards the northern hemisphere when it becomes winter. So looking at that allows us to relate and look at the global processes in the biosphere because you're looking at how matter travels through ecosystems. So migration is slightly related to how um, energy flows between different ecosystems because of course migration is moving from one ecosystem to the other or just different parts of the same ecosystem. For example, with whales who just travel in the ocean and don't, of course, cross onto land. Um, the final part would then be the movement of soil, plants and animals because how soil moves, how plants move and how animals move influences everything because of course animals, as then covered, can move from one ecosystem to the other. They then can take soil, but soil is important for nutrients and how that moves is important because some contain more chalk, make them more alkaline, some more acidic and so certain plants and organisms can only exist in certain soils and movement of soils depends on movement of nutrition and different chemical co combinations um, and of course plants because plants again serve energy and nutrients um, when you're looking from a biosphere point of, point of view there are different things you need to look at for one that will be climate change yes climate change exists but not in the same way you would probably think you would associate climate change with global warming. Now a lot of people say well climate change doesn't really exist. Climate change exists, global warming is still quite a theoretical because the planet's heating up but will that actually affect the planet? Yes it will, but that's also climate change. Global warming however is something that hasn't yet been exactly determined. Um, now in climate change there are different things you're going to have to look at that will include the different patterns of change in 
the rainfall and the snowfall because that will determine the temperature usually which again is another thing we need to be looking at but the change in different rain and snow patterns will affect the temperature in different areas that is a biosphere problem because simply if there's not enough rain in certain ecosystems those ecosystems will change and without these ecosystems the biosphere as a whole will change it is how the hierarchy links all together you need the bottom parts for the top parts to exist so change in the ecosystem will change the biosphere as a whole now different things you would then look at is okay stronger storms weaker storms and how that then changes if an area is known for hurricanes and hurricane season for example certain areas of the united states of america are known to have hurricane seasons now if the hurricane season is started and there's no hurricane and it finishes no hurricane that's then an indicator but in recent areas you also see um that there have been stronger hurricanes than in previous years and that's then had an effect on the world as a whole as different things have changed with the presence of a natural extreme event being stronger than in previous years now again changes in animal migration and animal life cycles is another indicator towards climate change and how climate change is affecting the biosphere this is because if it gets too hot and birds stop migrating south for winter that will then change the dynamic throughout the year again that may mean that certain flowers bloom early so the pollinators aren't ready for those flowers to be there by the time the pollinators are ready the flowers have grown have bloomed and died um, and withered away before the pollinators can get to it so distribution and abundance of that flower will decrease because the pollinators haven't got there for it to spread um, high temperatures and more heat waves another thing to look at because of course it's the opposite to rain and snowfall patterns which will indicate lower temperatures heat waves and high temperatures is important for the opposite reason if things are too hot then certain things won't be able to live others will thrive but it will then create an imbalance in the ecosystem um, another thing we'll be looking at thawing permafrost and how that relates to things because that will relate as cold temperatures warming up and it then becomes more difficult for permafrost to then return if it can return um, then of course changes to plant life cycles in a similar way as determining the change of lifestyles and animals happen because they're related both but I'll go over that in a different um, video you can then also look at damage from corals to indicate climate change because corals are very important in the ecosystem of the oceans and of course the effect of the ocean and ecosystem will affect the biosphere as a whole again rising sea levels and warmer waters will also change things with warm waters um, marine reptiles will be able to spread further um, because a lot of marine reptiles for example sea turtles are restricted to tropical and subtropical areas because the water is warmer and as reptiles they require heat to be active so if the water temperature is warm then predators will appear more abundant and certain organisms won't be able to survive that change with the arrival of new species they haven't previously been used to dealing with um, now theoretical ecology um, finds applications in applied ecology dealing with these environmental problems with um, climate change and the possibility of global warming and how that is affecting the biosphere as a whole now that's all that really encompasses biosphere biosphere is a, um, global processes and the 
climate and how climate change has been affected that as climate change is the biggest issue when it comes to the biosphere moving on we are now then looking at the ecosystem the next one down now here is a question we usually cover when you're looking at ecosystems and that is how do the annual variations of rainfall influence the productivity of prairie grassland plants now the prairie grasslands will be that ecosystem and looking at the rainfall will influence the prairie grasslands so that would be a question you'd be looking at when it comes to e eco uh, when you're looking at ecosystem from an ecological point of view now prairie grasslands are qu generally quite dry and then therefore quite sensitive to climate change so if there is an increase in temperature and a decrease in rainfall due to the increase in temperature then the area will become even drier than it is presently and become quite arid so the plants won't be able to grow and that would mean that they'll die out and the pro grasslands will come under desert desertification now desertification is essentially as the name suggests it is when an area or an ecosystem becomes a desert and therefore very limited things are able to survive in that area due to the harsh conditions of its environment now that's essentially how ecosystems are studied when it comes to ecology of course it's different depending on the ecosystem that is just one example of how um, ecosystems are looked at from an ecology point of view next moving down would be community now the community is an interaction between different species so sorts of questions you'll generally ask if you're looking at community ecology would be what level of fishing is sustainable so that's looking at whether humans are fishing too much um, say mackerel so the population of mackerel decreases and then are they able to produce enough numbers for us to then fish them again without the risk of them getting extinct ever an important issue when it comes to looking at community from an ecology point of view are invasive species now invasive species are found on every continent in more or less every country so that's a big issue and the effects of invasive species have often are often un now the effect of in invasive species is often underestimated and is a massive challenge to deal with due to them being new to the environment and they can have quite varying issues with the environment for example grey squirrels in the UK are invasive species to our native red squirrel and that has influenced the population of red squirrels but the ecosystem as a whole hasn't really been affected due, due to their similarities but as well as their differences and it has changed slightly from when they were introduced but not greatly due to them fulfilling similar roles so the disappearance of the red squirrel hasn't been overly affected because the grey squirrel has been able to overtake its roles um, um now an example of okay case examples for looking at the community level ecology would be nile perches were put into lake victoria and that resulted in the extermination of nearly 200 um, fish species that lived in lake victoria because when the nile perches were placed into that um, community, that lake, it created
created a different dynamic. There was another predator placed in there. So 200 species that usually didn't have predators or didn't have enough predators to render them extinct were suddenly flooded into their environment and wiped them out. This resulted in a massive dynamic in Lake Victoria which is still currently being dealt with. Another example would be the giant African land snail, um, almost forgot the name there, um, which is um, a very big herbivore that eats through a lot of vegetation which has been found in tropical islands in parts of South America. Now, as the name says, they're from Africa. So these tropical islands aren't used to having quite a, aren't used to having a herbivore with quite an extensive diet and eating as much. So of course, the vegetation and plants on the tropical islands have been eaten away very quickly and it's been a struggle to keep those environments contained with these invasive species now on the islands. A third example, which we're now looking at a, a plant example, would be the water hire tank. Now this is a massive weed problem, it's not actually a weed, but the speed it grows in water environments, most particularly tropical freshwater environments, have resulted in significant um, economical, recreational and ecosystem impacts because of how it takes up so much water and how it grows so fast and how other plants aren't able to compete with it due to different qualities it has in its growth patterns and its size and everything else. Um, now a British invasive species will be the ringlet parakeet. Now this is a breed of bird which is found in the southeastern parts of England like Kent and Surrey and parts of Essex and is spreading towards um, other parts of England. Now it affects the whole I am not entirely sure of but it is an invasive species that is spreading quickly and once the size increases its impact may become more prominent and may not be um, reversible. Um, vegetation management is often required when it comes to several areas due to the effects of herbivory. Um, as grasses and freshwater plants cannot grow as long without herbivores grazing or feeding on them. Now this has influenced um, community farming. Um, from various different perspectives from plants and animals as the similar case in the world will be the abundance of gazelles in the Serengeti who have been maintained by cheetah populations as without the cheetahs the gazelles would graze through all the grass in the Serengeti and nothing would be able to survive whereas without the gazelles the cheetahs won't have food and again the grass will grow for too long and this will change the dynamic in how different animals cape and survive in the Serengeti. Um, when it comes to looking at the relationship and interaction between different species which is what ecology focuses which is what the community ecology focuses on there are four different types of um, interactions between organisms that are named and have focuses. That would be the first one which is predation, herbivory and parasitism. Now this is the relationship where one receives benefit and the other one receives negative. So that would be predation, one gets food, one loses its life. Herbivory, plants eaten, animal gets food. Um, parasitism is slightly different, that's where one suffers, one gets ill or whatever the symptoms would be, 
or the other one gets live, able to reproduce, etc. The second is um, commensalism. This is where one gets a benefit where the other one gets nothing. So an example of this would be clownfish, which live in the stinging tentacles of sea anemones. Now, the anemone gets nothing from the clownfish being there but the clownfish get protection from predators and a home in which to nest. The third one is um, a mentalism. Now mentalism is where one gets a negative, one gets a disadvantage while the other one is neutral. This would be shading in trees, as in a tree will create shade patches making things more difficult to grow because they don't receive direct sunlight. However, this doesn't really change what happens with the tree because if the tree was creating a shade, was creating shade or not, doesn't really change how much sunlight the tree gets. So while nothing changes with the tree, the shading and the plants in that shade will of course get a negative. Um, they're not getting enough sunlight. The fourth and last thing would be mutualism. That's the more known one, I feel, the, um, when it comes with these last three. And that is where both sides of the interaction receive a positive. So there are multiple examples that could be used for this. Now moving on, we are looking at population and that is then looking at species directly. So this will be looking at a individual species population such as um, what controls the population of gannets in a particular area. So with this it also comes with quite a lot of conservation issues and you can look at it from a conservation point of view and ask um, something along the lines of um, why is there few fen um, why okay why is the fen reef spider so rare in the United Kingdom now this has an answer that will be reef spiders use water surfaces um, in the same way other spiders use webs. Um, ripple, ripples in the water by insects on the water surface are detected throughout the um, raft spider um, yeah throughout the raft spider's front legs which essentially work as antennae detecting ripples coming in. Now the reason raft spiders are so rare uh, now the reason the raft spiders are so rare is because of their reliance on certain plants such as the water soldier. Now this is a common plant um, that has now become quite rare which may be a correlation in which the raft spiders are decreasing in population because the water soldiers are as well. Now they have been reduced to only three sites in the South Africa and Norfolk um, in east side of England. Now this will be due to the habitat loss of wetlands and the, the habitat loss and fragmentation of wetland habitats um, but due to now the issue being discovered and reason why then now reintroductions are currently being underway to reintroduce raft spiders to new areas of wetland and hope that their population will thrive again. Now why is there this correlation between? That would be because fen raft spiders build dome shaped webs um, which they build on these plants and due to the loss of these plants the raft spiders aren't able to build their nests, hence they aren't able to live in those environments. So now you've looked at it from a population point of view, we're now then going to the smallest part 
which is going to be quite short because there's not much you can look at from an individual point of view. Now this will only be looking at an individual or an individual species. So that would be looking at, for example, the limit of tolerance in a specific species. Now I have done studies looking at the tolerance, limit of tolerance for Daphnia. Now Daphnia are a genus of um, insects, they live in water, um, they are more commonly known as water fleas and that is how you research into an individual. You look at species and you look at one aspect in that species, for example limit of tolerance and then proceed with your investigation. But that is all I've got for this video. We have gone over the different hierarchy of ecology and I hope you enjoyed. I hope you understand this. That is the more important thing. But hopefully I'll see you next video. Bye.